How's it going, everybody? Brett Mix here from Macho Wrestling 101. Please hit like and subscribe to my videos. Uh, I do old wrestling every day, and uh, I stick up to date with the new Raw, SmackDown, and pay-per-views as well. So if you did that, I would greatly appreciate it. We're going to review SummerSlam 1995 today. The 1995 was a bad year for the WWF as a whole. The numbers were down, ratings were down, revenue was down. Uh, and the the gimmicks were just pretty ridiculous as seen by the Royal Rumble 1995 roster alone. But the, today was SummerSlam in, the, in August 1995 and the, the tagline is Feel the Heat. Oh, we felt some heat alright. Uh, the King Mabel, the Mabel who just won the King of the Ring a few months prior at the worst pay-per-view of all time, King of the Ring 1995, Mabel won the King of the Ring crown and he would face the WWF champion, Diesel. The WWF had been running on Diesel power for the past half year and it showed. Uh, so th those two guys would meet in the main event. Meanwhile, guys like Bret Hart get stuck in the mid-card with Isaac Yankum, a young a young Kane, but uh, only known as Jerry Lawler's dentist that that is there to get revenge on Brett, some evil dentist gimmick. Nonetheless, we had the second classic ladder match in this show, where Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. Uh, people d are, debate if this one's actually even better than WrestleMania 10. It's just not notorious because it didn't happen in MSG. It didn't happen at WrestleMania. Uh, Shawn Michaels throws his fit at the end. It, it's not a big deal. It's, it's it, doesn't, it doesn't botch What's a classic in matches? I think this match is every bit as good as the WrestleMania match, if not better. I actually do consider it better. Consider it better, but we'll get to that. The opening match is Hakushi, who is known as the White Angel or the modern day Kamikaze, as Vince McMahon says on commentary. McMahon's with King on commentary for the night. But it's Hakushi against Sean Waltman, X Pac, Six, Six Pac, The Kid, The One, Two, Three Kid. We'll, we'll just call him the kid. So it's the kid versus Hakushi, and good choice to pick to, to open the pay per view with because this is quick action. These guys had good chemistry. Uh, Hakushi's a good worker. He had that four star match with Bret Hart, the first ever match in, in your house history. Uh, in the end, K Kid hit a drop kick to Hakushi, who followed him out of the ring, followed by a springboard cross body block. A leg drop over the top rope got him a near fall. Then he went up for a frog splash and got his two count. The kid went for a spinning heel kick, but Hakushi caught him and pinned him with a power slam at 9.27. So just read, read my, some of my notes, and Hakushi got the victory over the 1-2-3 kid. I rate this match three stars and a quarter. It was a really good opener. I thought it was a pretty great match to, to begin SummerSlam. At, at, an event that didn't really spell excitement. I mean, it's 1995, and you just feel the vibe everywhere. You just feel the vibe in the crowd, uh, with the backstage wrestlers, every every name that gets dropped, even how they commentate. Everything around 1994, 1995 is just it's kind of a dark cloud for the WWF. Uh, and it's not maybe the steroid trial coming to life, but it's, I don't know, it's just an aura I, you get when you hear the names, like Barry Horowitz and Skip and Zip. You know what I mean? You might not know what I mean, <laughs> but I know what I mean. Anyways, I'm sure you. I'm sure everybody understands how bad 1995 was in comparison to other years. 96. It felt like 96. It was a good year, but they. There was a lot. So much bad from 95 that it had to get rid of. 96 had to get rid of some of the stink 95 put on it. Um, ne next, we got Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Bob Spark Plug Holly. Who knew that these two guys would be veterans in the WWE and would have decade-long careers at this point of view? When it was Bob Sparkplug Holly taking on Hunter Hearst Helmsley, let me do a curtsy. Um, Holly with an early slam, and this match went back and forth. Uh, the British Bulldog was shown on camera driving to the event when this happened during the match. Uh, back body dropped by hard not Hardcore Holly, by Holly, I want to say Hardcore Holly, and another drop kick to Holly, went for another back body drop, Hunter hit stop and hit the pedigree at 7-10 for the victory, I gave this match 2 stars, I thought it was pretty decent, 
Uh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, as we know, is a pretty good worker, to say the least. And Holly at the time was agile, and he moved a lot quicker than his in his hardcore days. And uh, this is this is Bob Holly with the long hair. So uh, take that as take that as you get it. But I yeah, I think it's two stars. I'd say that's decent. I'm just rereading my the ending of that match, and I'm just deciding right now: should I give it less than two? I think two two stars is fair. Next, we have the Smoking Guns versus the Blue Brothers, Jacob and Eli Blue with Uncle Zibakaya. Uh, I these this is what I meant, but I said when I said that 1995 has the bad dark cloud aura, it might bring some nostalgia to me and nostalgia to you. But some when I think of Jacob and Eli Blue, I think of uh, and I'm not trying to rhyme. <laughs> when I think of Jacob and Eli Blue, I just that's what dawns on me is the horrible start. That this SummerSlam had it's in 1995. Um, match wise, no, the SummerSlam is not horrible at all, match wise yet. But just saying those names, just yeah, this is where the 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 match starts. The, the matches start to become a little bit bad, uh, next to horrible. This tag team match here, the Smoking Guns won. Uh, they defeated the Eli brothers. Bart held one of the Blue brothers, and Billy went up top with the leg drop for the pinfall at 6:09. That was the Smoking Guns' finishing move a lot of the time. The the big leg drop from the corner from Billy, while Bart held the other way. Um, yeah, just just a basic tag team match here. I I give this a star and a half. Next up, we had Barry Horowitz, the Ultimate Underdog, versus Skip, who had Sonny in his corner. Uh, Horowitz didn't have a WWF contract, McMahon said during commentary during the match, but he said if he beat Skip, then he would. So there was a lot on the line. Horowitz sure got a lot of WWF action time uh, for a guy that didn't have a contract. I remember him wrestling before this event, so it's kind of a weird stipulation. Um, Skip, yeah, Skip yelled, uh, Hakushi made an entrance and distracted Skip. As, and then McMahon references that Skip cost Hakushi a match a week ago on Superstars or something or that event, something to that liking. And this, and the Skip, uh, Skip was just distracted by Hakushi. This led to an inside cradle on the outside roll up t- for today's standard. It's just a roll up at eleven twenty one with Horowitz getting the underdog victory. Uh, Vince McMahon went crazy on commentary. The match was actually pretty good. I rate it two stars and three quarters. But, um, yeah. It, it, it's Barry Horowitz versus Skip for, you know, over ten minutes on a pay-per-view. So it can only be as good as it can be. But they actually did a decent job. I rate it two stars and three quarters. Um, next up, we had Alondra Blaze versus Bertha Fay. Alondra Blaze at the last summer slam, 94, versus Bull Nakano had a good match. But not Bertha Fay. This one went 4-14, and Bertha Fay hit a powerbomb to beat Blaze and win the women's championship. Uh, yeah, Harvey Whippleman was in the corner of Bertha Fay, and even her entrance theme, Bertha Fay, was cringe. Uh, yeah, just not a not a good match at all. I, I give it half a star. Next up, we had Kama taking on The Undertaker. This is the second year in a row Ted DiBiase would be managing The Undertaker's opponent. Uh, as last year, DiBiase's had The Fake Undertaker, and this year, Taker is taking on Kama, who we all know is The Godfather, or Papa Shango. This is, in, he's Kama, the ultimate supreme fighting machine. That's Kama Mustafa. He's in the middle of being The Godfather and Papa Shango in this role. Undertaker got a decent match out of Kama, but it, the only problem is, is it went too long. It, it, it was a decent match for a big big guy's match, and for Undertaker who wrestled in zombie mode, and we know when Taker's in zombie mode, it's hard to it's hard to get quality out of that. But uh, yeah, they, these guys did a good job. Just went too long. I rate it two stars and a half for the effort, and uh, for take it's probably one of Undertaker's best early matches, and I bet by early I mean the first half decade of his career, uh, because obviously his gimmick prevents fast, exciting wrestling, so 
that's definitely a rating that I'm going to stand behind when I say two and a half because for how slow they had to work, it, they, it was, there was some quality there. Um, next up, we had Bret Hart versus Isaac Yankum, DDS. As you know, is an early Kane with no mask and playing a dentist. Uh, Bret Hart can make anybody look great. Uh, I give this match three stars. Uh, Bret Hart won the won the well. Actually, he was disqualified. Uh, Yankum was disqualified. Um, so Bret Hart won by DQ. But after there was some back and forth between Jerry the King Lawler, who tripped him up. Um, but the the big man match, Bret could work so good well with a big man. He sells brilliantly. He bumps and he makes every move meaningful no wasted motion in Bret Hart's offense or his defense his selling it's all it's all top notch and he he brought out a good match out of early Kane so there's that so three stars for that match next up we got Razor Ramon in a ladder match with Shawn Michaels now this is a better match than Wrestlemania 10 even though I rate them both four stars three quarters so I just gave away the rating for this match. Four stars, three quarters. This time Shawn Michaels wins. At WrestleMania 10, Ramon wins. He becomes the undisputed IC champion when he had the both belts. Then now it's just back to one belt. and They changed the look of it. Now it's white. And uh, and it goes to Shawn Michaels as Ramon was on the outside. Uh, tons of great bumps. I like the leg work that Ramon did to Michaels, placing it in between the ladder. A lot of innovative ladder spots in this match. Uh a lot of repeated ladder matches you see from today or earlier the earlier years come from this match so this match really paved the way and it's an underrated match too because if you're going to talk about a ladder match with Shawn Michaels you always talk about Wrestlemania 10 so this by default is underrated um but it's every bit as good Michaels reached the ladder at the top he botched the first time but the second because he couldn't reach so he had to set up the ladder again, and he was pretty frustrated. He kicked the other ladder that was beside it over. He reached up at 25.04 and became the new Intercontinental Champion. Four stars, three quarters. Amazing match. After that, we had the main event between Diesel and Mabel. Good God. I rate this a dud. Diesel had a clothesline out of the corner after being dominated by King Mabel, including moments of uh, camel clutch torture. And... From that, we had the still reigning champion, Diesel, after a clothesline out of the corner to Mabel. What a way to end a fucking pay-per-view like SummerSlam. Anyways, Diesel reigned tall. This match is a dud following one of the best... Following a match that's in my top 50 ever, you follow it with Diesel and King Mabel in a match that ends with a clothesline out of the corner for the reigning champion who stays champion. I don't know what's worse. The 1993 main event with Luger not winning versus Yokozuna. The Undertaker versus Undertaker main event. Or this main event between Diesel and Mabel. So like three years in a row, SummerSlam had something to really be ashamed of. It's a good thing the next few SummerSlams are the opposite. Alright. That's uh, that's about it for this SummerSlam. I rated it a 5.5 out of 10. I think there was some good matches here to keep it from being failure grade. The ladder match alone gives it three points out of ten. Uh, then, then we had the the one two three kid Hakushi match. We had uh, the Hunter Hearst Helmsley match, the Undertaker casket match. There was a few good matches around the three star category plus the ladder match. But then there's Diesel and Mabel and the fact that that was in the main event that takes a lot of points away. It deducts a good two point five three points on its own. Um, so yeah, I came up with about 5.5 out of 10. So I think that's fair for SummerSlam 1995. We're looking really looking forward for the next few SummerSlams. I hope you are too, and thanks for uh, following along. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe or comment in the video what you thought about the SummerSlam. I'd be interested to hear. All right, I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out. Thanks for watching, everyone.